This is Steve. And this is Sean. Welcome to Acromedia's High Five. So Steve, what are we going to talk about today? Um, well, we're going to talk about fraud today. We're going to talk about how on a Drupal site you could prevent fraud. Um, just a little bit about more about fraud. Um, that's all I got, really. You want to add some just more fraud, fraud stuff? Do you want to say fraud. more fraud again? More fraud. We're going to talk about fraud, fraud-like things. You yeah, know. CVV, CVCs, credit cards, 16 digits. <laughs> 15 digits for really old credit cards. Yeah. Checkout um, systems. Nobody cares about that. Commerce. Okay. Fraud. So you know nothing about fraud. I know surprisingly. Have you ever been a victim of fraud? No, I haven't. Have, have you? you? Mm, I had my credit card or my debit card like zinged once or whatever. Mm. I've, I've gotten that before. I don't know mm. if that counts as fraud. Does that count as fraud? Yeah. Okay. Fraud. I've been a victim of fraud. Okay. But what That's about a online website administrator or business owner? has almost certainly been a victim of fraud probably many times. Um, by that, we usually mean anything that's a credit card chargeback, okay. um, which is usually a fraudulent order that caused the chargeback. Um, so you probably, you know, it can be like 5%, 10% even, depending on what you um, sell. It mm -hmm. can be fraudulent orders. It can be really high. As high as 10%, really? Like one in 10? One of our clients uh, on a certain subset of their customers for like new subscribers, they will approach 40%. Whoa, did not know that. So, <laughs> yeah, um, it can vary a lot depending mm -hmm. on what you sell. Obviously, like if you just, you know, sell like PDFs or something, you're probably not like that likely to get hammered by fraud because what people are buying doesn't necessarily have like resale value or anything. Okay, so, so that's one of the elements of fraud than what you're selling. That's kind of its own section. That, that's like a big part of, of um, how you're a victim of fraud. If it's mm -hmm. something that can be resold, um, so it's a way to sort of like launder money through stolen credit cards, mm -hmm. um, that's what will make you the biggest target of fraud. So, you know, if like uh, electronics, you know, phones, laptops, mm -hmm. you know, tablets, things like that, something that can be resold um, easily, um, you know, video games, uh, like even CD keys are actually like a pretty good target of fraud because you can okay. sell them kind of anonymously online. Okay. Um, and you can sell them cheaply at a discount, but you sell just lots of them. And it's a way to get money with credit cards without having to like go to a store and right. sort of expose yourself to like actually being caught mm -hmm. or whatever. So, so specifically in Drupal Commerce, can we do anything to avoid being 40%? <laughs> yeah, and so so the ways you have to do, I mean, obviously you can't not sell your product. That's your whole business or whatever, right? You try to have certain ways to sort of uh, assess the risk of an order. Um, and so we try to do that. Um, we've been just working on a, a basically a, a sort of fraud scoring mm -hmm. uh, module for uh, Drupal Commerce to say, okay, what increases our risk? So like what we're talking about now, it would be like, okay, maybe certain types of our products are more prone to fraud mm -hmm. and we can do that a couple of different ways maybe you set some rules you go hey anything over two hundred dollars is more likely to be mm -hmm. fraud anything in these categories are more likely to be fraudulent or you can even just go okay hey we've previously flagged orders as fraudulent and these products tend to be in those orders mm -hmm. a lot and you do that all through um, the module that you've made. Yeah, so all through this, so we have all this data, and 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 it requires some input from like the store owner. If you might want to say like, hey, sort of these are the thresholds um, that I'm sort of most worried about, because the one thing we won't have is we won't have your actual chargeback data. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to look at what you get chargebacks on, and then go in and mark orders mm -hmm. as fraudulent, um, and then we can use that data and say, okay, this order was fraudulent. It had, it was this size. It had. Um, these products in it and that kind of thing. We can use that to sort of extrapolate what other orders that come in are likely to also be fraudulent. So, you know, I, I'm assuming that, you know, right out of the gate, you don't always know when an order is fraudulent. It happens after the fact. How do we track that? How we track that initially is when you get a chargeback, then you go back to that order and you set it to a status of that this was a fraudulent order. And that's standard in the module to do that? Yes. Okay. And so you would set that up, and and so at the start you're not going to have much data, right? You you'll have a really sort of loose. You can you can use some of your own guesswork of okay expensive things or like I, I know I have problems with these products already, mm -hmm. um, and so you could set a few sort of rules and thresholds. But then the the way you really get it is you use a lot of data on your previous um, orders that are fraudulent to to match up orders with that and you go so really obvious ways you can say oh hey was this the same email address as a fraudulent mm -hmm. order was this the same shipping address as a fraudulent order you know um, same billing address that kind of stuff and you go oh well that's a really risky order we're almost certainly not going to do it right like this 
um, you know, address did a chargeback once, it seems really unlikely that they're doing a legitimate one. Um, so you can decide if you just want to flag them as manual review or if you want to just completely just, you know, disallow them. Um, but the more data like that you build up, the more likely you are to catch them and stop them. So basically, you, a fraudulent order, you would just never ship out. You would never, you know, authorize the credit card. Or if you did, you would just refund it, stop the order, and just um, so there's no fraud. Because you can't really stop people from doing the chargeback. Yeah. You have to stop yourself from accepting them to begin with. Got it. So with some of these thresh thresholds there, you said like there's price, mm -hmm. there could be a certain type of product. Um, Obviously, we have the data to track a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. um, what other thresholds can we rely on? Um, a lot of order history, mm -hmm. um, uh, types of products, certain combination of products, certain uh, ways that they're, uh, where they're shipped, PO boxes are more risky. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes certain locations uh, like... Um, even something that's a, like a unit number in an apartment is more risky mm -hmm. um, because oftentimes people will get it shipped to like another building in their own apartment, you know, and then they swipe it from the mail room or they, or they you know, it gets dropped off at the door and they, and they you know, um, snag it or something. So even, even odd things like that, you're like, oh, what's the difference between an apartment and a house or something? Mm -hmm. it, it, um, it can be a, a fraud risk there because... Um, out in the suburbs or whatever, it's just less likely to be a problem. There's just less density where, where sort of shenanigans can happen, basically. And have we ever, um, ever like implemented, uh, you know, uh, these types of practices for a, a client on a large scale where they might not have the ability to manually look at all of these orders? Or Yeah, and so that's where most of the value comes in, okay. is, is you're trying to do these scores to say, okay, here are the ones to look at. You don't mm -hmm. have time to look at all of them. So you, you, we usually do a combination of two things. We say, okay, maybe if they're over this threshold, we're just, we're just not even going to look at them. We're okay. just going to decline them, right? Because like, oh, they literally match address and name mm -hmm. and stuff like that of fraudulent orders. We're just canceling those, Got right? It. That person can call in or something or whatever. We don't even want to deal with that one because it's almost certainly fraudulent. Um, and then you can flag ones as being sort of dangerous, right? And so maybe fraudulent, maybe not. And then you can do additional checking on those. Maybe you literally call the person, you talk to them. You know, maybe you talk to the bank. Maybe you um, maybe you put them through a credit check. It, it depends what you have for systems, but you can do additional um work on that or maybe even it just takes a person to look at it and you'll be like oh this is just a coincidence their billing address sort of happened to match with this other order and it you know it's not you know actually a problem it was just a coincidence that the system okay. determined or whatever and then you have ones that you say okay these ones we think are really safe and you probably just send those through automatically and hopefully that's the vast majority and then you're cutting you know into this threshold of just these risky ones and those are the only ones you have to look over that makes sense you know in terms of actually you know looking mm -hmm. at it from a business owner perspective or administrative perspective mm -hmm. and just being like, okay, here's what I flag, here's what I allow through. Mm -hmm. um, just be before we kind of wrap up, let's talk a little bit about the module. Like, is there anything else the module does that people are going to benefit within Drupal Commerce? You know, is that is that it? Is it is it easy to get into the site? Is there anything that we want to it's touch on It's there? really easy. I mean, you basically set it up, you turn it on. Um, you'll set maybe a couple of settings, although we even come with pre-done defaults. Mm -hmm. And then really the part you just have to do is you have to start flagging stuff as fraudulent when it comes back mm -hmm. and that's what we can use to build all the data and so as long as you do that we're just going to do a score and then you can do sort of whatever you feel like with that score it just gives you a little bit more information when you're processing this order and is uh the data from fraudulent orders is that um everyone who's using the model module just the client so right now it's just the client mm -hmm. um we're we kind of floated around the idea of Having this sort of uh, global one where it's be like, hey, everyone who uses the model can share the data. We have to work out um, how to do that for privacy concerns and licensing thing because now you're taking data from one person's site and you're sort of sharing it around. So it would be a thing where maybe we sort of store it and then it just matches a key. So you, you don't give the data out to everyone else, but you can say like, hey, here's this email. What's the score you have on this email? Um, there are there are some services that, that do things somewhat like that for, mm -hmm. for billing addresses and stuff to assess, you know, fraudulent risk and stuff. But we're trying to even do the basics of, you know, here's your stuff, you know, 
how do these match within your data? It actually doesn't take that much. Like you process through a few thousand orders and you will have a pretty good data set to work with. It doesn't, it doesn't, you don't need a hundred thousand orders or okay. something like that. You're not going to get it with 20, but you know, pretty quickly, even a few hundred is going to start giving you better results. So if I have a Drupal website or, you know, running, um, I'm assuming Drupal Commerce, does this work A, with Ubercart um, and does it work with different versions of Drupal or is it just? Uh, this would be uh, currently just Drupal Commerce and it would just be Drupal Commerce for seven right now. Okay. Um, no one's really started porting uh, contrib modules for eight yet. So we will be porting it to eight, um, but we're not there yet. Okay. So you want to uh, give us a too long didn't read kind of version of this episode? Um, you're going to get hosed by chargebacks a whole bunch. <laughs> um, but hopefully uh, you can, uh, using sort of fraud detection rules and stuff um, through Drupal Commerce, you can limit the amount of orders you send out that are risky. Um, so your chance of getting chargebacks are a lot less. Sweet. Well, if you thought this was interesting um, or you want to know a little bit more about it, please ask questions below and uh, subscribe to our channel. Also, uh, please follow us on Facebook and read our blog at acromedia.com.